He can show us action rather than telling us about action. He can give us emotion dramatically without using adjectives that say, well, here's what the emotion was. And I've, to close, I've picked a, um, a short passage which seems to do all of these things. Tells a remarkably dramatic story of combat in a few lines, and then describes uh, details about the scene in a few lines, and then presents an interesting picture of a person who undergoes an emotional reaction. The scene is the combat between Borg, al and Sohral. Uh, برخواست گرد What a scene. And what's special about the scene is not that other people couldn't write that action as well. They would just use more words. And one of the qualities of Ferdowsi when he's on his game is what they call ijalas. He gives you the impression he said more by using the fewest possible words to say what he has to say. So there we have the action scene. Gordoff Adid, who's protecting the White Fortress, who's a bright Iranian princess, recognizes that she can't beat Sohrab in the Battle of Swords, but there may be another battlefield in which she can achieve victory, and that might be by being more clever than Sohrab and by attracting him. سپه بعد انان اجده ها را سپرد به خشم از جهان روشنایی ببرد چه آمد خوشان به تنگندرش به جنبید به جنبید و برداشت خود از سرش رها شد زبند زر موی اوی درفشان چه خوشید شد روی اوی بدانست کاویخت گرد آفرید مران را جز از چاره درمان ندید بدون روی بنمود و گفت ای دلی میان دل ایران به کردار شیر دو لشکر نظاره بر این جنگ ما بر این گرز و شمشیر و آهنگ ما کنون من گوشایم چون این روی و موی سپارت و گردر پر از گفت بود که با دختری او به دشت نبر به دینسان به عبر اندر آور گرد نهانی به سازین بهتر بود خرد داشتن کار مهتر بود ز بهرمن آهوز هر سو مخا میان دو صف بر کشید سپا کشفت ببخشید کنون لشکر و دش به فرمان توست نباید بر این آشتی جنگ جست دش و گنج و دشبان سراسر تو راست چو آیی بدون ساز کت دل حواست سهراب ریاکشن چو روح ساره بن بود سهراب را ز خوشها بخشاد او ناب را یکی بوستان بود در اندر بهشت به بالایو سر دهان نکشت دو چشمش گوزن و دو ابرو کمان تو گفتی همی بش گفت هر زمان ز گفتار او مبتلا شد دلش برافروت و گنج بلا شد دلش 
an important scene in the story of Rostam and Sohrab, in that it shows that Sohrab is capable of having an emotional reaction to things. He's fallen for Gorgal Farid, who's able to turn away and go back into the White Fortress, and Sohrab knows he's been tricked, having for a moment uh, lost his bearings because of the feelings he has for Gordolf Reed that he can't get to the fortress uh, till the next day. So we have nine or ten sessions where we're going to deal with our appreciation of uh, Ferdos and Shah Hamen. We're going to look at two or three movies. We're going to listen to a reading from the Shah Hamen. There'll be panels which will deal with uh, fathers and daughters in the Shah Nameh, the ending of the Shah Nameh, and what this expression, Shah Nameh al Hadish Koshe, really means in relation to the text itself. And the two speakers uh, who will make the chief presentation today uh, represent what I said at the beginning of uh, my remarks. Uh, we have one speaker who is. Um, an academic, a professor of mathematics, and he's here to talk about Ferdowsi's ideas. When was the last time I heard a professor of mathematics at the University of Texas come to a class of mine and give a talk about William Wordsworth or T.S. Eliot? And our second speaker is a historian, a social critic, even a political activist, and he's not going to talk about politics in the Shah Naman. He's going to talk about style in the Shah Naman. Again, testimony to the special and distinctive culture uh, of people for whom uh, these uh, these sorts of uh, texts, in particular, Ferdowsi Shah Naman, particularly uh, important. I need to thank the students in. Uh, the ongoing Ferdowsi seminar for their collaboration, which is making this uh, event possible. I thank the Society of Iranian American uh, Women in Austin, whose uh, budget allowed for support of several features of uh, parts of this program. And I thank the uh, general Iranian American community of Austin, uh, which supports events like this, and their support uh, we can see here today. Um, in uh, the audience and also in uh, the individual who will be the moderator for the rest of this session, uh, a prominent member of the local Iranian American community, uh, who I'll now turn over the session to, Mohammad Saadeliye. find a personality of the poet Ferdowsi the Shah Nameh that will give us a sense of what kind of man he was and what his uh, worldview was. If we assume that the person who says I, the person who talks about Ferdowsi in the poem is the same as the poet outside the poem, the answer is yes. But we have an interesting situation in imaginative literature in which narrators of stories and speakers of lyric poems are not usually assumed to be the same people as the persons of the poet outside the poem, the persons of the narrator inside the poem. For example, you women here imagine yourselves as Hafez's wife. And Hafez comes home one evening, and on the evening news, you hear that he's produced a poem, Agarun Turkishi Razi Bedastar at Delamara, the Hall of Hindu Yash Baksam, Samarhandu, Bokharara. And his wife says, I'm not a Turk. That is, Hafez is playing a role 
That doesn't mean he's not being true to reality, but he's playing the character of the individual who is the speaker.